Are you ready to try another dimensional block? <laughs> Hey everyone, Kristen Somm here and we are continuing with our cup of cheer quilt. So today we are going to try another dimensional block. So those of you that did the mitten two block, if you weren't a hundred percent happy with it, think of it this way. We get another chance to try again, right? So remember we are not going for perfection. There is not any reason to go for perfection. We are just going to do our best and um, learn some new things and enjoy the journey. So today we are going to do the gift box. So the gift box is on page 41. I actually am thinking I'm going to do both gift boxes. There's another one on page 44. So I am going to show you how to merge them together. You absolutely do not have to do them together. We actually don't need the second one until section six, I believe. So totally optional. You can just do one or you can do both and do them in separate hoopings, uh, whatever you feel comfortable with. But I'm going to show you how to do both in one hooping for those that will want to do that. And the process will be the same um, in the photos when we're going through the tutorial, so it shouldn't matter too much, but um, just an added element, something extra to learn. And I took a look at um, merging the two on Embrilliance Essentials, and it's pretty involved, so it really will be learning some new things. So I think that will be fun to do. I like learning new things. So there's a few things on this one. Um, so let me move some stuff around. There's a part A and a part B, just like how we did our mitten, the mitten two. Um, that part will be the same as far as there's two steps. So I noticed after I did the tutorial that someone was asking, um, is this what the mitten's supposed to look like? And it was part B and they were asking where the stripes were and um, the snowflake or star, whatever it is on the mitten. So just Again, remember there are two parts, part A and part B. Part A will have all of the stitching, most, most of the decorative parts, and then um, for the mitten especially. This one, we're gonna use a zipper. If you haven't used a zipper before, it's not a difficult thing. Um, I don't know if I've done one with the decorative zipper. I probably have, I'm just not remembering. Um, but Anyway, I went through the directions. It doesn't look too hard. Um, I think it will be really fun. Something new to, to try, right? So let's go ahead and go over. Um, I am going to, generally I do the little blurb of um, what's needed and all that, and then I, I do the rest in photos to show you, because most of it's pretty, um, we've been doing this a while now, we know what we're doing. This one I will try to do more video because there is um, quite a few steps to it. And like I said, I don't think it's going to be super difficult. It's just something new. So anyway, let, let's go ahead and get started with what we're going to need. So on the first one, like I said, it's the gift box. It's on page 41 of your booklet. And let's just talk about what we need for this one. So our main fabric, um, we are going to, like I said, we're, part A and part B. So we are gonna start with just the present part. We aren't gonna do the main fabric or the quilting until after, but for right now, I'm just gonna go over all the parts, all right, all the fabrics and such that we need. So our fabric for today is the white on white. It's got the stars on it. Hopefully you can see that, yeah. So the stars fabric, white on white. Make sure and back this with fusible stabilizer. You wanna not get puckers. There's not a whole lot of stitching on it, um, but there's enough that you want to be careful not to get um, puckers. So this first fabric, it's going to be our main fabric is going to be eight and a half by eight and a half for our main fabric. And like I said, the white on white with stars. And then we have the box. So there are two parts because remember we have part A and part B. So there is two of these. This is the reddish red with pink stars on it. And I did back mine with fusible stabilizer. Um, we will go over all of the bits because we're going to fold it. I don't think we fold. Oh, we did. We fold this one. And you want to at least have fusible stabilizer on half of it. And I'll go over all of that. But I did go ahead and fuse um, stabilizer on the back of uh, both of mine and the full piece. You want it on at least half of one. 
But anyway, so we are going to use this for our box and we need two of them and they are six by five, six by five for the box fabric. All right, the gift box. And then we have um, the cuff. So the lid, lid, not the cuff. The cuff is the mitten, sorry. The lid. So the lid of the present or the gift box is four and a half by two and you want two of these and I did back mine with fusible stabilizer you can see right there see how I've got the little bit so um what was it four and a half by two and two of these for the lid and then for this one we want um, the bow. So there is fabric for the bow. It's an applique bow. It's super cute. This is the navy blue uh, with Christmas swirls on it. I forgot to mention this is just a green silky solid. There's nothing on it. Um, but anyways, back to this one. So it's a navy blue and it's the, got the Christmas doodles on it. I did back mine with fusible stabilizer. I definitely like that for applique pieces. It makes it so that it's easier to cut and all the pieces don't go all crazy and um, no puckering. I, I like to do that. Again, that part is optional. So on the bow, it, it, we just need one piece and it's four and a half by two and a half. Four and a half by two and a half for the bow. All right, and then we will need uh, flexifoam for this one. If I recall, it was not in the embellishment kit, so I cut a piece from my stash. Um, you definitely want to have flexifoam on hand. It's a good idea. We gave out one um, as a giveaway not too long ago. Um, so on the flexifoam, this is for the bow base. So the bow will be like um, poofy, right? A poofy bow. And this one we're going to have four by two and a half, four by two and a half. So this way, four by two and a half for the flexifoam and it's for the bow. So you'll see that there's two parts of the bow. We put down the flexifoam first and do the trimming and all that. And then we do the fabric after that. All right. And then there is a lace zipper. So it's kind of funny in the directions, it says you want one 14 inch Navy zipper, but then below it, it says in the embellishment kit, the zipper is eight inches. So you, if you're using something from your stash, you can use the 14 inch zipper, but we're not obviously not going to use all of it. So they um, trimmed it down for us, I guess. Um, but eight inch Navy blue zipper, it's that decorative zipper. Isn't that so pretty? I love that. So cute. So, um, just one of the zippers and then we're going to use some straight pins like we did before to line it up um, and I bought some um, cork to try so I'm going to I'm, I'm going to try that and I'll show you in a bit all right so and then we want our um, batting so like I said we are going to quilt the second part it's probably called B I haven't looked yet but um, this second part is what when we're going to quilt our main fabric and to do that we are going to use batting so whenever we quilt we use batting and we base it on our final cut size so the final cut size of this project is six and a half by six and a half so that means we want a piece of batting that is seven by seven seven by seven for your batting and then when we do quilt we're not going to do it until later but when we do we are going to use christmas eight that's the stockings in size six by six and in horizontal so i want to point this out um a few people have been posting their pictures of their blocks and remember your quilt your way it totally doesn't matter and not a problem at all but i want to just point out again that in some of the designs there's a horizontal and a vertical and you have to make sure to choose the right one that you want for your quilt so if you are looking for the six by six horizontal stockings then all of those stockings are going like this right so if you're choosing the stockings that's going like this your stockings are sideways and there's nothing wrong with that i just want to point out again that there is a horizontal and a vertical design so when you're looking through there don't just pick the first one you see um, make sure that you're choosing the one that you want for that block and then the other thing that when we are quilting you probably can't see this because it's pretty light i on the white it's white on white um, with my quilting and there you can see so see this stocking so that's the other thing is when you have a um a design that is going a certain way then when you're putting your blocks together you want to make sure to look at that and look at your quilting and look at how you want that because this star could easily be turned the other way and then your stockings are sideways or upside down 
And again, your quilt, your way. I just want to point out a few things um, to make sure that you're thinking about them if you choose to. All right. So stocking, see my stocking is going horizontal in this line. And so I had to make sure to look at my star and how the direction of my star so that my background fabric was correct. So, or going the way that I wanted my, my fabric to go. All right, so um, those are all the parts that we need for box A, for gift box one, sorry, gift box one. So like I mentioned, I'm gonna do um, two of these. I'm gonna do the second one as well. So the next one is on page 44 of our booklet. And again, we don't need this one until section six. So it's totally optional if you decide to do them together. I'm going to just because I think it will be really interesting to um, merge them together and saves time, saves stabilizer. And then when we when we get to section six, we have more blocks done. I really, I've been enjoying that. I think that part's so fun. And all of your comments in our Kristen Creates group about how much fun it is to see our quilt coming together since we're doing it by section. Instead of just having a bunch of blocks laying around, we've got you know, big parts of our quilt done. And I'm just loving that. I think that's so fun. And I'm loving your comments about how much fun you're having with it too. So thank you for always, your always kind comments. I really appreciate that. All right, so on page 44, the gift box two, the first thing that we're gonna need on that, oops, I dropped my batting. Um, this is the um, white, it's actually got gray, gray scrolls on it. So gray Christmas items on it. Very light gray though. I mean, you could definitely call it a tonal fabric, but anyway, it is big piece of white, eight and a half by eight and a half. And it's got the very light gray Christmas swirls and peppermint sticks and um, candy canes and holly leaves and just Christmassy stuff. Super cute. So eight and a half by eight and a half and make sure to back this with fusible stabilizer. I'm using the Kimberbell fusible backing. I'm gonna grab my, my batting that I dropped. Sorry about that. All right, so then, oh, this is gonna be so cute. I, I really like this one. I attempted to do a pink. Gosh, that'd be cute. But no, I'm gonna stay with what we're doing. All right, so again, this is an A and a B section, so we're not gonna use that main fabric until the second part, but I'm just going over the supplies for now. Look at this. Isn't that adorable? I love this, love this. So this is a very light gray fabric with a bunch of Christmas trees in different colors. That is so pretty. This is for the box, of the gift box. And we need two of them for part A and part B. And these are gonna be cut to six by five. So we're gonna start with these. It goes this way, six by five. And I did back mine with fusible stabilizer. Like I mentioned on the other one, you're gonna to wanna to at least do half of it in with fusible stabilizer on the back. And I'll go over that more um, as we get there. Sorry, I have little pieces of thread, threads or something on the back. All right, so anyway, um, six by five, two pieces, and we're gonna fold it in half. We'll go over that as we go step by step. But six by five for your gift box fabric. And then for the lid, the lid of your gift box. It's again, that same green that we did on the other one. And these are cut to four and a half by two. And we want two of these, four and a half by two. And I did back mine, it's totally optional. We are gonna fold these in half and iron them down. I'll show you as we get there. It's not folded in half actually, it's a little different, one inch I believe. Um, but we'll go over all of that step by step. So for the lid, it is that light green, not really light green, like a medium green, um, sage green, silky solid. And this is four and a half by two and two of them. All right, and then for the bow, isn't this so cute? So this, I don't know if you can see, there you go. So red um, with lighter red or I don't know, um, in Christmas designs with the candy cane and peppermints and swirls and this is for our bow so for our bow we are going to start with this at where is it five by three five by three for our bow i did back mine with feasible stabilizer and then with that bow we're going to make it a poofy bow so that means that we want our flexifoam so our flexifoam just like our fabric is five by three five by three for our our bow and this is for the flexifoam. I don't recall that other one being five by three. I was just gonna look real quick. 
Oh, it's not. How funny. The bow is larger on this one. That's interesting. All right. Um, it's probably just that the fabric is larger. On the other one, on, on gift box one, it was four and a half by two and a half. And on this one, it's five by three. How weird is that? I think it's the same design, but anyway. All right. And then we are going to have a zipper. And just like I said on the other one, it says in the directions to use a 14 inch Ruby zipper. But then below that, it says that the embellishment kit zipper is eight inches and that's all we need. So it doesn't matter at all. Um, but just want to point out if you get confused on the zipper size. So the one we're using is eight inches. It's the Ruby red. Very cute. We only need one zipper. And then since we're going to quilt this, we're going to use our batting after you drop it on the floor. <laughs> so um, for our batting, the final cut size is six and a half by six and a half. So that means we want a piece of batting that is seven by seven. All right, seven by seven. And then for the quilting on this one, oh, that'll be so cute. We're going to use tree one in six by six horizontal. So again, like I mentioned on the stockings, make sure to look for the horizontal design if that's the one that you decide to use. But look at how cute that'll be because we're using our tree for our gift box and then we have tree quilting. Cute, cute, cute. Oh my gosh, that's fun. So anyway, uh, tree one for our quilting in six by six and make sure to use the horizontal design. All right, and the, that's all the supplies that we need. I am going to go to the computer and show you how to merge them together. It is a little different, so you'll have to pay attention. Um, there's more steps to it. There's more steps to this design, um, but we are gonna get through it and we're gonna have another opportunity to learn the dimensional pocket blocks. All right, so gift box one and gift box two if you decide to do both. So let's go ahead and go to the computer and see how to merge them together. Hey everyone, so I'm at my computer now and I am going to show you how to merge the two de designs together if you're doing gift box one and gift box two together in one hooping. Um, this one takes some brain activity, so I'm going to be thinking throughout it. I did take a look at it beforehand, so that should help. Um, I'm opening Embrilliance Essentials. That's the embroidery software I use. My dogs are in the room with me, so excuse their little sounds. All right, so um, when we open it up, it automatically shows down here what hoop size that we're on. And I'm on my six by 10 hoop. I'm gonna leave that for now and just see what fits. So if you want to change your hoop size, you go to this preferences folder, click on that, click on the hoop size that you want and say, okay. Um, so let's see what size design it is and all that. And we'll go from there and then you click okay. All right, and then I'm gonna go here to merge stitch file and I'm gonna bring in the first dimensional block. So cup of cheer quilt, dimensional pocket blocks. That's uh, the fifth folder here. And let's see, there's gift box part A and gift box part B. And there's two, so notice there are two of them. Interesting. Oh, because remember I said that that, um, the bow is larger on the second one and it does look larger here. Okay, so that's gonna be different for merging. All right, let's go ahead and give it a try. So I'm gonna open up this first gift box one part A and double click on that. It brings it to the center of my um, hoop. And down here we can see the size. So it's four and 13 16 and by four and three 16. So just under five by five. Um, so I think we'll probably need a larger hoop. I'm going to go ahead and change this to my eight by 12. Let's go ahead and see how much room we have and we'll go from there. All right. So I clicked on my eight by 12 and I'm clicking okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and take this design. Now, if, if the designs were the same, we can make all the changes that we want to it and then, um, copy and paste, but it is two separate designs. So keep that in mind. That's very important. All right. So I'm going to click on the stitching and move it up here. All right. And like I mentioned before, you just want to make sure that you're not going over the hoop The this yellow part here is designates our hoop. I'm going to click on this compass and click H so that I can make sure to see all of my hoops. So look at, I had lots more room left over. Good thing I did that. So I'm going to go ahead and move this up, <clears throat> excuse me, 
further and I'm using the black squares in the middle here to make sure that my design is moved to the center right there okay so you have even a little bit more room but we'll go ahead and leave that there all right and then I'm going to go to merge stitch file I could go ahead and start making the changes on this one but might as well bring in the second one since they are different designs so I'm going to go to merge stitch file and I'm going to click on that fifth folder dimensional pocket blocks and I'm looking for gift box two this time. So the second one, see how this one has a number one advent number and this one has a number 20 advent, but they're both part A. We want both of the part A. So I'm gonna double click on that. It'll go to the center. I'm gonna click on the stitching and I'm gonna bring it all the way down here. That's probably a little too low, yep. So even though it looks like the stitching ends here, you want to make sure not to go over that hoop line and you can see the hoop line here. And if you do that, if you go over it, it's going to make it so that when you get to the machine, it's going to go, I can't do it. It, it does not fit in my hoop. I can't do that. So just make sure that you can see <clears throat> all of those little dotted lines that show the design. All right. And then look at, we've got plenty of room in between. So that's good. Um, and we actually don't need all that much room because the zipper is in the second part. So you probably could do this in your six by 10 hoop very easily, actually. Um, so either way, I'm going to leave this here. Now, look at all of these default blue, default orange, default black. Um, so we're going to want to change those so that we can group part of it. And again, this is totally optional. So here is the first one right here, gift box part one, and then you scroll down and there is gift box two. All right, so I'm gonna start on this first one. Um, and I just clicked outside of the box to make it not highlighted. So this first one is default one blue, and these are going these parts will be the same. So we could merge those together. So I'm gonna go ahead and just change the color so that I can get them to merge together. So the default one blue, I'm just going to change to the first color, which is sea green and say, okay. And then this default 14 black, there are two default 14 black. So I'm going to go ahead and change this one, click on the color down here. And then the first color that comes up for me is storm. It doesn't matter what color you choose. Um, as long as it's the same uh, as what you're going to do in the next gift box so that those will merge. All right, and then on this default to orange, if we didn't mer if we didn't change the color on this, it, it would uh, join with this one, and then you won't have two separate steps. All right, so that's why we're going to change it. So this is the placement, and this is the tack down, is my guess. So we're going to go ahead and just change this color. So from um, default to orange, we're going to click on the first color that comes up, and that's bronze. All right, and then this default 14 black, I'm gonna go ahead and keep this. I think that this will be fine. In fact, let's see. So it's blue on the gift box one. On gift box two, it's red. So you wanna make sure not to let those two merge. All right, so we're gonna leave that. All right, and here's that default two orange again. I'm gonna go ahead and change the color just so that I can merge it with the others. So on this one, I'm gonna click on the color and I'm going to check check the next color which is biscotti for me all right and then here's some more default blues all right and we want to make sure to change the color so that you could leave one of them if you wanted I'm going to go ahead and just change it um, but as long as there's only one then you won't have to worry about it joining with the others so I'm going to go ahead and change it <clears throat> so I already used sea green I'm going to click on mint and say okay and then on this orange, I'm going to click the color and we've already used bronze and biscotti. So I'm going to go to the next one, which is wheat. All right. And then pumpkin seed, I'm going to leave it for now. I don't think there will be more pumpkin seeds. So I'm going to leave that. And then here's another default blue and default orange. I'm going to go ahead and just change them um, so that we know that everything's separated and then we can join the ones that we want joined. All right, so our last one that we used was mint. So I'm going to go ahead and click on magic mint and say, okay. All right, and then down to this orange. And same thing, click on the color. We've already used biscotti and wheat, so now I'm on caramel. And this wildflower. 
So Wildflower is the satin stitch on um, the box. The funny thing is it's not even that color. It's going to be green. Interesting. But anyway, um, I think I will go ahead and change the color because we could have it join with this. Although, let's see. No, probably not. Different colors. Probably. Nope, they're both green. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and change this. What is it down here? They have it on prickly pear, so I'm going to put it on something different and then I'll make them both that color. So I'm going to click on wildflower and I'm just going to choose, I'm going to choose a green actually so that I remember where I'm at in the design. And again, it does not matter what color, but it'll give you a visual of, oh, this is the lid. So you can choose to change the color. I'm going to use this aloe and say, okay. All right, and then this uh, default one blue is the last bit. I'm going to change that. Even though there's not another default blue now, you could just leave it. Um, I'm going to change it to cloud just so that I've got all the parts changed. The only one I didn't change is this default one black because I don't think it's in anywhere else. It's not. So I'm going to leave that. All right, so those are all good for the first one. Now the second one, we want to check it and look at it and then use the same colors that we used on the first one. So on this first one, let's see, there's 12 steps on the first one, there's 12 steps on the second one. So we should be all good. So we know that this placement of the um, gift box, we used sea green. So I'm going to change this one here. Now we're on the second part. You can see gift box two and we're on two one. And I'm going to change it to sea green so that it will do the placement stitch for both of them together. So that first color is sea green. I say OK. And then that default black we change to storm. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that and change it to storm. All right. And then on the next one, two, three, we have default orange. I'm sure the first one we used was bronze. I can check it right here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the color and change it to bronze so that it will merge with, it will do that on both of those. All right, and then it does the advent number just like it did on this one. So we don't want to merge this because they are different colors. We want a moment for the color on the advent to change, um, to be able to change our thread color. So I am going to leave this one as wildflower um, so that I have a moment to change my thread color. So you'll see that it will change the order of some of these things, I think, but let's, let's just keep going. All right, so I'm going to leave wildflower. So after that, it looks like we used biscotti on 1-5. Let's see if it's 2-5. So 2-5, I'm going to change it to biscotti. All right, and then on the default one blue, this is number 2-6. On 1-6, we used mint. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the color and click on mint. All right, and then on this orange, we're on 2-7. On 1-7, we used wheat. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to wheat right there. All right, and then pumpkin seed, I think we kept it, right? Yep, pumpkin seed we kept. So 1-8, we're going to just leave as is. On 1-9, we used magic mint. So on 2-9, we'll use magic mint. And again, it doesn't matter what color as long as you're using the same color that you used on your first gift box so that they will join together. All right, and then 2-10. For 110, we used caramel. So I'm going to click on the color and click on caramel, say OK. All right, and then on 211. So this is that one that I changed to aloe. And I want to show you a different way of finding it rather than scrolling through all the colors. On this second one, we can click on it. And instead of being on threads, and you'd have to go all through here to try and find the, the aloe that we used before, we can click on palettes. See this palettes button here? Click on that, and then it immediately shows all the colors that are in our entire design. And that's less colors to look through. So I'm going to click on aloe from there and say OK. All right. And then we're on the last one. So the last one we used cloud. 
on 112. So I'm going to go ahead and click on 212 and click on the color and then I can find it here or I can go back to threads. Either way, it's going to come up. You can see on threads or on palettes, it shows cloud. So either way works fine. All right. So those are all uh, the same colors. Now we want to merge and join them. Now, keep in mind that because of these numbers here, it will probably stop um, joining. And that's why I was saying that we're going to do it in a few steps. So let's just see where we're at. So right now we have 24 stops, 24 color steps. So if I go to utility color sort, <clears throat> it thinks and it's changed it by 11 color changes. So let's see, I'm going to make sure to click new view. Very important to click new view. And you'll see that right here, we're on untitled one tab. It's going to open another tab. So I click new view and see it brought it to another tab. And now, <clears throat> excuse me, now everything is merged together. So in this first tab, we have the two different gift boxes. And in this next tab, everything is merged together into one. If you click on that, see they're all together now. So if I open this plus sign, then I can check just what merged and make sure that it's how we want it. My guess is it won't be done and we'll have to take another step, but let's just see. All right, so here we have C green. That's our placement stitch. That's perfect. Those are joined together. And then <clears throat> that zipper opening is what I think that's called. Um, but either way, those are merged together. That's perfect. And then on this one, that's placement stitch down here. That's together. And then we have that number. And see, now this is where I think it'll probably do each of them separate. Let's just see. Oh, it didn't, so it didn't put our number. So we're gonna have to move our number. Um, we're gonna need number 20 up here. That will be very important because right now it's going to um, start doing the fabrics without the number. We want to make sure and have our number. So here is the lid placement and lid tack down. Those are all merged together, that's correct. And then our lid, yep. Perfect, perfect. And um, the satin stitches together and our cloud. So this actually did merge everything, <clears throat> excuse me, in the right way. The only thing is that this 20 is going to be after and we don't want it after. We want it before we start placing those back fabrics. So all we do is we're going to click on this and we're going to move it up to where this number one is, just like the placement or just like the tacking ah oh, geez just like the number um, stitching here we want the number stitching in that same order so right after one four we want this to move so we're going to just click on it and i find it easiest if i bring it over to the left it usually comes up and then just hold it over where you want it it went a little too low so i'm going to bring it up one more time there we go. So you want one and 20, you want those, and then it will continue to do all of those together that we had. And so this one is done. That is surprisingly great. Just make absolutely sure to move your number 20 up to space five. So one, five, one, four is the number one, one, five is the number 20. And then we have everything all in the right order. So this is perfect. I'm going to do a file save as, save stitch file as, and where I'm opening my applique blocks. I don't want it there. I want it in my dimensional pocket block. So I'm going to this fifth folder and clicking open. All right. And then I'm going to say gift box um, part A, part A. And then I'm saying one and two because I have one and two together. Part gift box one and gift box two. And these are both the part A. So name it however you want it. Um, but that's what I'm doing. I did gift box part A one, two, whatever will make you remember that those are joined together and then click save. And then if you have a machine that is, um, Wi-Fi ready, or I don't know if it's just the Solaris and, and um, Luminaire that does this. It could be, I don't know. But if you have a Brother Luminaire or a Baby Lock Solaris um, and possibly other machines, I don't know. But if you click on utility, 
you can send it to your machine. Your machine needs to be turned on and you need to have already set this up, which I showed in a different video how to do that. It's super easy. Um, you just basically tell your machine which Wi-Fi to use in the settings. That was really easy. So I'm going to go ahead and click send to Solaris. You can change the name of it if you want. You could. I'm going to go ahead and do that just in case. So part A. Part A. Oh, there's no space. Interesting. Part A is, is this one, the, both of these. All right, so I'm going to say OK. And then it says File Sent to Machine. So it's already there. It's ready. If you don't have a machine that does this, you would just transfer it to a USB stick and bring it to your machine. Super easy. All right, so that's the first one that is done. So I'm going to go ahead and do I want to close this so that we don't get confused on it? I think I will. I'm going to go ahead and close these tabs. I don't need to save them because I already saved the design. I don't know why it asks again, but that's okay. All right, so now... Hey, everyone. So I am back at my computer. I actually did an entire tutorial for you on how to do the Part B gift boxes and merge them all together and made all kinds of changes and then... Uh, went to stitch and realized I don't have the quilting designs <laughs> and you can't import them in after the fact because of how they, the gift boxes are positioned. So I'm starting fresh here. Hopefully I remember all the little tips that I gave on the last one. So um, we are going to merge the two gift boxes together in part B. We already did part A and that one is fine. Part B is different. Um, and we'll go ahead and go over all of it. So I'm going to go ahead and open and Brilliance Essentials. And um, right down here it says I'm on my 9 by 14 hoop. I'm going to go ahead and start um, with trying it for the 9 by 14 and see if that will fit. I think it will. Um, and I think that more people have a 9 by 14 than the people that have the 10 by 16. But you could use absolutely either one. Um, anything smaller than that would not fit. Um, unless you do some finagling, but I, I wouldn't try it. So if you have a nine by 14 hoop, um, let's go ahead and try that. So from here, I am going to go to, if you need to change your hoop size, you do it from here, this little um, uh, preferences folder and just click on the hoop size that you want. All right, and then I'm gonna go to merge stitch file and I am going to open our first quilting design, which is Christmas eight. Um, embroidery files, Pez, and it's the stockings. So you can see the stockings here and we are looking for six by six horizontal. So down here. So here's the horizontal. You can see the direction of the, the stockings and here's the vertical. So I just want to point out again, there is a horizontal version and a vertical version. We are going to use the horizontal today. So I'm going to double click on that. It goes to the center of my hoop and I'm going to leave this here for a minute. Um, and I'm going to bring in the gift box and that's just so that it will be centered in the middle of the quilting. You could um, move it if you want, but th this actually makes it easier and we will later, I will show you how to move um, so that everything will join. So here I've got my quilting design. It's closed up right now. If I click this plus sign, it shows the five steps of the quilting. So I'm going to go ahead and go to merge stitch file and I'm going to bring in the part B of the uh, gift box. So I'm going to close up these quilting designs <clears throat> and go up here to where I have it on my desktop embroidery files. Pez is what I use for my machine. We're doing the cup of cheer quilt and it is in this fifth folder um, dimensional pocket block. All right, and here's the one I did earlier. See, there's no quilting. How did I forget that? <laughs> All right, so the, now I want to point out something very important. There are two different files for this gift box. Gift box part B, two of part B. So notice there's this one and then there's this one. Um, and this one is gift box two. So gift box one and gift box two, these are both part B. So you need to use both of them. There is a slight difference. The bow is larger on the gift box two and there's different colors you can see. So I'm going to click on this first one. That's the one that goes with the stockings here. So I'm going to double click on that. It will go directly to the center, which is why I hadn't moved the, the box yet. So once I have it already merged together, I'm going to go ahead and click outside of the 
uh, design and drag down. You can do it that way or you can do it over here. Oops, sorry, I'm moving it. I didn't mean to do that like this, okay? So you just wanna make sure that you have both the quilting design and the um, gift box together, however you wanna do it. I, I generally do this, it's easy. Um, that was easy too. All right, once you have both designs, make absolutely sure you have both designs, then you just click on the stitching and move it up. And I am going to use those little black squares. Where are they? There they are. All right, and see, I only have the gift box right now. I don't have the quilting design. So if I were to move anything, it's only gonna move the gift box. So you wanna make sure that you have everything all clicked when you move it. Oh, I still don't, look at that, isn't that funny? All right, I'm gonna close this and this, and then I can easily just drag both to make sure I have both. And there's my little black squares that I wanna make sure to use to make sure that I get it in the center. All right, so the center of my hoop right there. Okay, so that's the first one. I'm gonna go ahead and bring in the second one now. Also, I could start making the changes, but might as well do both of them together. So I'm gonna to go to file merge, I'm sorry, not file merge, merge stitch file. And then I'm going to look for my quilting design. So here's my quilting bundle. And the next one we're gonna use is tree one. So tree one, embroidery files, Pez is what I use for my machine. And then I'm gonna look for a six by six horizontal. So here's the horizontal in six by six, here's the vertical. And you can see why we want to be very specific on which one that we choose, they're very different. So I'm gonna use this horizontal six by six, double click on that and it goes to the center. Now I know it looks a little convoluted here, but it's okay. We're just gonna leave it for just a minute um, so that we can center our present two design. So I'm going to go to merge stitch file and I'm going to close up the quilting here. We're done with that. And I'm going to go to my cup of cheer quilt. Uh, not the label, not the bundle. Here it is. And embroidery files, Pez, cup of cheer quilt. And then it's the fifth folder, the dimensional pocket block. And see, this is the one that we already imported, and now we're gonna bring in this one. So it is gift box two, part B. Double click on that, and it will go to the center of your design. Now again, we wanna make sure to have both the quilting, the tree quilting here, and this part B together. And so I'm gonna just do it over here, and you can see I've got both of the designs. I just clicked out here and dragged up so that I have both of these together. And then I'm gonna click on the stitching and move it down to the bottom, as far down to the bottom as I can get without going over the hoop. Super important, I mentioned this before, you don't wanna go over the hoop or you will um, take away the room um, it will make it so that it won't fit in your hoop and when you get it to the machine, you'll have a problem. All right, so here you can see if you're using your nine by 14 hoop, this is how much room you have left over. There's not very much, um, basically an inch. So, cause this is six and a, it is, it's an inch cause this is six and a half and six and a half, that's 13. So you have one inch left over of space in between, which isn't a lot. It definitely can be done because really once you have your um, main fabric basted right here, this line here, um, nothing else is gonna get in the way. You might have to watch the zipper a little bit, but you should be fine. But um, this is, it's pretty tight. You will have to move your excess fabric out of the way to get the basting stitch on both of these. And after that, you should be fine or you have the option of using your 10 by 16 hoop. So I'm gonna go ahead, I think I'll switch to my 10 by 16, give myself a little bit of extra rim, but like I said, you can use your nine by 14 and it'll work. So if you decide to change hoop size, you go here to preferences and go to uh, the hoop size you're looking for. Here's my 10 by 16 and I'll say, okay. And then when you go here to hoop, H hoop, see how much, um, how it's moved them. Now I'm going to click outside of the box and drag to make sure that I've got both the gift box and the quilting design. And then I'm just going to move it up to the top. 
All right. And then same thing for this one. Click outside of the design and drag down and then move this all the way down but not hitting that um, hoop line. You don't want to hit that hoop line. You want to make sure that you've got enough room that you can see this, the lines here. So if you've gone too far, so let me show you. So right here we're at um, seven by almost 16. Say that I bring this down further. Oops, I only did, I'm gonna click undo. Notice, see, I only had the gift box. I didn't have the quilting design. Um, highlighted as well. So I'm going to click this undo button here, the black arrow, and then I'm going to do that again to make sure that I have everything. Now I have the quilting and the present, and let's just say that I move it down here. All right, see what happens? See, it turns red and it says, I can't do it. It's too big. You're making me work too hard, right? So that's telling you that it's not going to fit. So if I click the undo button, it will go back to where it fits. All right, and Let's see how close we are. Yeah, so that's plenty of room. It fits within the hoop and it, I have extra room here. And um, this should work great. Okay, so we have the quilting and we have the gift boxes. Remember, we've got two different gift boxes, but they are both here and they're ready. There's a lot of changes to be made here though and I'm gonna walk you through it step by step. We have these four steps, okay? The two quilting designs and the two gift box designs. So notice all I did was click this um, plus sign or the minus sign to make it get smaller or bigger to show all the steps or to just have it all together. So I'm gonna have these all closed, all right? So that I can, um, I don't see all the parts within. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this tree and I'm gonna, the tree one horizontal, the quilting, I'm gonna bring it up to just below this quilting design so that the quilting designs are together and the present designs are together, or the gift boxes. So I'm just gonna click on it and drag it up. It's not always the simplest thing. Just a warning, let me see here. And Perfect. All right, so then we have Christmas eight, the stockings, and we have the tree one um, design. So both of those are together, and then we have the gift box and gift box one and gift box two. So that's how I want mine to be so that they are together so that I can group them. Now I need to get them ready for grouping. Just like before, we've always got this default one and blue and default two orange. That's how mine come up. Yours may come up differently. Um, on in brilliance. It depends on what you've chosen as your default thread. I use um, glide as my default thread. So if you've chosen that, I think the way I did that was in here, if I recall. Yes. So um, I clicked this thread button, select a thread brand from the list, and I did fill tech. And then I said um, fill tech glide. And I said use this as my preferred brand. So that's why the colors come up as the ones that I've chosen. In case you want to change yours, it's up to you. Um, and again, whenever we change all these colors, it doesn't matter what color you choose. It's just so that we can group them. That's the only purpose to it. All right, so I'm just going to go through these. This is the quilting designs first, and I'm going to change the color so that they won't group. If we don't change the default one blue, see there's two of them, it will put our placement for our batting and our placement for our main fabric together, and we need those to be separated. So that's why I go through and I change the colors, and it's just so quick and easy. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and change the colors of the thread. Um, and that's just so that it will group. So I'm gonna click on this first one, default one blue, click on the color, and the first color that comes up is dark aqua. So I'm gonna click on that. It doesn't matter what color you choose, it's just the first one that comes up for me and that makes it easy. All right, and then same thing for the orange, default to orange, I'm gonna click on the color, click on the first one that comes up and that's blaze. All right, and then the next one, this is one three that we're on. I'm gonna click on the color and we've already used dark aqua. So now I'm gonna to go to marine. And then the one four is orange. I'm gonna click on that and change it to Oriole, the second color that comes up. And then this default 17 turquoise. So our thread colors, let's see. 
for our quilting design, we are going to use white. I'm going to, this is totally up to you. I'm going to use white for um, the gift one quilting. And then I'm using white again for the quilt two, for the, I'm sorry, not quilt two, um, the gift two um, quilting as well. So I could leave these as long as it's not used elsewhere. I'm going to go ahead and change it just to make sure in case there's a turquoise later. I don't think there is, but it, it can't hurt anything. So I'm going to click on this, click on the color, and I'm going to choose sprout. All right. And again, you don't have, you probably won't have to do it on that one. So I am on now number two. Number one is all done. All of this Christmas eight quilting is done. So I'm going to go to number two now, and I'm going to make sure to do the exact same that I already did on the first one. So this two one, I want the same as one one. So we use dark aqua. So I'm going to click on the color and I'm going to change it to dark aqua. See how easy that is. Then for one, two, we used blaze. So two, two, same thing, blaze. And then for two, three, we used marine. So I'm going to click on the color and choose marine. And for two, four, on one, four, we used oriole. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the color and choose oriole. And for the last one, this 2-5, for 1-5 we use Sprout. So I'm going to click on that and click on Sprout. Say OK. So that's easy. That 1 and 2 are all done. And those should join nicely, very nicely. All right, so I'm going to close those. I, I just clicked that little um, minus sign to make it close up those two windows. All right, and then we are going to move on to the gift boxes. So notice they're both part B, but they are different. Um, the steps will probably be very similar, um, but they have, I think there's a number on each of them. We have number one for gift box one, and then we have a number 20 on gift box two. So let's go ahead and start. So on this first one, so I am going to just change the color so that nothing groups. See, these two would group, and we don't want that to happen. So we'll just go ahead and change the color. We want to make sure to use a color that we haven't already used, though. So that will be important. So we could leave this open to make sure we know what colors we've already used. All right, so on default one blue for the very first part, this is on 3-1. I'm going to go ahead and click on that color. And the first one that comes up is sea green. We haven't used that. So these aren't coming up as the same colors as the quilting. So that makes it easier actually. So I'm going to click on sea green for the new color. And then for the orange, click on the color. And we've already used, no, we didn't use bronze because we used blaze. So these are a different set of colors as well. So I'm going to click on bronze. And then for 3-3, three, three, same thing. We're just going to change the color to make sure that we know what's going to group. All right, and we already used sea green, so now we're going to use mint and say OK. All right, and then we are on 3-4 and click on the color. And we already used bronze, so now we'll use biscotti. All right, now this is wildberry. I'm going to close this quilting. And I'm going to open this one. So I just click on the plus sign and it's just so I can look at it. So see here is the red bow and this one has a blue bow. And we want to make sure that those don't group so that we have time to change the thread color between them. So I'm going to keep this wild blueberry and just leave that as is. And then I'll probably keep the wildflower as well. All right, so we're going to move on to number three, six right here. And we're going to change this color to one that we haven't used yet so that it will group. So we used mint. You can see it up here. So the next one would be magic mint. So I'm going to say OK. And then for the orange, same thing. I'm going to change the color. We've already used biscotti. So the next one is wheat. All right, and then coin. So this is probably a placement or tack down of the zipper, I'm guessing, something like that. Um, but we have coin, notice right here, we have coin um, already in our design. So actually, I'm going to make sure to change this because we don't want that to join. This is the um, 
the satin stitch of box two, gift box two. So we want to keep that. If you look at the picture, our, we're going to use a pink for the first gift box one and a light gray for gift box two. So since coin is already in our gift box two design, we want to make sure to change the color on this and then we'll change it on the, that zipper part on the lower one. So 3-8, here's all you need to know. 3-8, we're going to change the color. So right here, I'm going to click on fog. That's the first one that comes up. And then for this grapefruit, I'm going to keep this. Sorry, I'm going to keep this because it is a different color than this one. And we, want, we don't want these to join so that we have time to change our thread color. So I'm going to keep the pink grapefruit as is. Now I have wildflower as the lid the satin stitch for the lid which is kind of funny because it's it's green we're going to make it green so i'm going to actually change this because i have wildflower here for the bow and i don't want those to join so i'm going to pick a green color and i'm it doesn't matter what color you choose but it will give you a visual of what you're working on so i'm going to actually look for a green so i'm just going to scroll through here and find a green it doesn't matter what green there's, oh, here's one, light olive or mossy. I'm going to choose mossy. doesn't matter. All right, any green, um, it doesn't matter. Actually, that's pretty dark, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to move on. I'm going to say, oh, did I, am I on the mossy? Let's see. I'll say okay and see. Yep, mossy. <laughs> okay, so there's the mossy. All right, so that one is all done. All of three is done, but we want to now make the changes on number four. So we want to make sure to copy the same colors that we use so that they will join on the parts we want to join. There's parts we don't want to join. All right, so let's start with four one. So right here, four one. So let's look at three one, we used sea green. So I've already clicked on it. Notice I've clicked on it so I can move around. And I'm going to click on this color and I'm going to look for sea green. It's the first one. So that's easy. Say OK. All right. And then the second one, 4-2, click on that. And 3-2 is bronze. So we know that we want bronze. All right. And then 4-3, click on that. And it's probably mint. I will confirm that. Let me just scroll up. 3-3 three, three is mint. Okay, so see, I'm just going by the numbers here. That makes it easy. So now we're on 4-4. Four, four. Click on that, and it should be the second color shown, Biscotti. I'm going to confirm that. I'll say OK, and then look at 3-4, and that's Biscotti. So that was very easy. So the next one is that, um, that bow, and we don't want that to merge, so I'm going to go ahead and keep it as Wildflower. And then I'm going to jump to the next one, which is 4-6. So 3-6, we used Magic Mint. So I'm going to click on Magic Mint and say OK. All right, and then we're on 4-7. What did we use? For 3-7, we used Wheat. So I'm going to click on the color and look for Wheat right there. All right, and then we have black oh so they this is when we had that coin on the first one so what color did we use we used fog so here let me show you this so when i click on the color fog will not be the first one that comes up but if i go to palettes then i can see the colors i've already chosen so all of these colors are currently in our design and i can find fog right there it's number 17 for me it's fog and I say OK. And again, it doesn't matter what color, but you want to make sure it's the same color as what you used for 3-8. 3-8 and 4-8 should be the same so that those will join. All right, and then I do have that coin. So here's the coin for my satin stitch of gift box two. And I want to keep that as is because we don't want it to merge with this three nine. We want three nine and four nine to be separate. And you're going to see we're going to have to do a little bit of specialty on here when we get to that point. All right, and then four ten is prickly pear. This is the one that we used mossy, I believe it was called. So we want to use the same one. So we want this mossy. So instead of looking through all of our threads, we can go to our palette like I did before. So if I click on the color and I click on palettes, then I can easily find mossy rather than scrolling all through and finding 
um, the right color of green. We just want to make sure that they're all the same. All right, so we are going to um, join these threads, but I'm almost certain it will not be complete and we'll have to do an extra step, which is really cool. That's going to teach us a few extra things. So we already have our quilting um, done and those are, are together. We've got them in order. We want to make sure that you have quilting one and quilting two together like this, you know, in the right order and then the gift box one and gift box two. So I'm going to go ahead and go to utility color sort and with knowing that there will be a little bit more we'll need to do. We currently have 30 stitches or 30 steps, um, 30 color changes. So I'm going to go to utility color sort and it's reduced it by 12. So I'm going to make sure to say new view so I can see what changes that it made. So notice here's our first tab with the four different steps. And then the second one that has joined into one step. So let's go ahead and run through this and see what changes we need to make. So we have our placement for our batting together. We have our tack down of our batting together, our placement of the main fabric together, our tack down or basting stitch of the main fabric is together. And then we have our quilting design together. So remember, I'm going to do white on both of these. If you're using a different color, then you would not want to have both of these um, be the same color. You would easily just change the color on one of them in your original in this tab so that it does not join. I'm going to use the same color for both of them so it's fine. Um, it's a white background if I recall for both of them. All right so then let's see what do we have here. So this is the placement stitch for our um, Flexifoam. It starts with the flexifoam on our bows. We're going to have nice poofy bows. So this is the placement stitch for the flexifoam and then the tack down stitch of the flexifoam. So those are perfect. And then we have the placement stitch for the applique fabric and the tack down stitch of the applique fabric. And then we have our blue bow. And then this is what I think will happen is after all of this, Oh, okay. So it did join um, the next steps. I thought it would do everything separate at that point, and it didn't. But here's what's really, really, really important. See this bow is down here. You want to make sure to move this bow up to this bow so before it starts doing all of these other steps. All right, so we can easily take this bow and move it. That was super easy. All right, so then we have blue bow as number 110 and red bow as 111. That's really important to keep these in the right order um, so that nothing stitches over something else and all of that. All right, and then we have 112. That was easy to do. So 112 is, I'm not sure what step this is. It must be something with the zipper is my guess. Well, let's, let's continue on. It's grouped, so that's the good thing. All right, and then this next part is grouped. That's perfect. And then this is that, I think it's probably the zipper tack down or placement or something like that. I'm not sure which this is yet, but those are grouped and that's what we wanted. All right, and then we have our the bottom of gift box one, and then it jumps right into the, the um, what do you call it, the top of that box, the lid. We actually don't want that. Um, we can we can group these two. All we would need to do is keep it in order. So see, we have that the bottom of gift box one here, and then the bottom of gift box two is down here. That should be together. So we're going to go ahead and just click on it and bring it up one. And now we have pink grapefruit one, and then coin one. So. Um, the bottom of box one is 115 and the bottom of box two is 116 and then we have both of the lids so it actually will I believe it won't stop because they're the same color anyway but I'm actually going to uh, group it again just just to make sure all right so we currently have 18 steps I'm going to go to utility color sort just to get those last two lids together and you're don't forget to make sure that your, let me just click out of here. You want these, um, these are the two big changes we made. We moved the bows so that they're together and we moved the bottom 
of the boxes together, all right? And then we have the lids together and those we can join. So I'm going to go to Utility Color Sort and it says it's been sorted but not reduced, but watch, it actually will be, let's see. New view, okay, now we're on this last one. So now we're down to 17. How many did we have in the, see we had 18 in the other one. So we're down to 17 now and everything should be just right. Quickly run through to make sure. All right. We don't want those joints. That's why they're different colors. That's perfect. And we don't want these two joined. And then we have our lids joined. So that was absolutely perfect. And we've got our quilting. Everything's ready to go. Uh, perfect. And don't forget, I said you can absolutely do these in separate hoopings. You don't have to join them. This is a, a big project and it's just another way to learn more um, what we're doing with Embrilliance and with our embroidery machine. So I'm going to go ahead. My machine is on. So I'm going to go to Utility Centa Solaris. If you have a um, Baby Lock Solaris or a Brother Luminaire XP1, then you can send this to your machine. I've, I showed that in an earlier video. Um, it's super easy to do. You just have to set it up on your machine by telling it what Wi-Fi network to use, and then you can send it. So I click send. I'm gonna go ahead and change the name. I'm gonna say um, part B. Part B, that works. Part B, and then I'm gonna say okay. And it says file sent to machine. How easy is that? If you don't have a machine that is connected to the internet, super easy. You would just transfer this to a USB drive and bring it over to your machine. So anyway, we are ready to get stitching. start by folding your lid fabric one inch down from the top wrong sides together and iron that down just like this all right do that on both fabrics and if you're doing the gift box too, do it on those as well and then for the box fabrics fold it in half lengthwise and um, iron that as down as well do that on both and if you're doing your gift box too, do it on those too. All right, that's the start. So next we are going to um, draw a three quarter inch past each of these lines here, top and bottom on both of them. And then we are going to cut right on those stitches right along and to the top here that we just drew extra all the way down, opening up the stabilizer, just the stabilizer right between those points on both of them. 
All right, after you've cut out that little cut line or cut box, this is what it'll look like. It was simple to do, not difficult at all. For this next part, we're going to take our folded fabric. It's folded lengthwise. So what you're going to do, so one thing I want to point out too is that when you cut these, you're supposed to cut three quarters of an inch higher um, at the top and three quarters of an inch uh, longer at the bottom. And for mine, when I did it that way, my fabric did not fit. And I googled lengthwise and it says lengthwise is you take the longest part of the fabric and you fold that part in half so it would be the narrow part so anyway when I did it it didn't fit so I cut mine a little bit longer so what you're supposed to do here now is line up the crease of the fabric the part remember if you only did fusible stabilizer on half of yours you want the fusible side on the top all right so if your fusible is only on this side then make sure that you're placing it with the fusible part on the top, not on the bottom. All right, and you were supposed to line it up, but I found it easier. I'm going to just put it in my little box cut here to be able to line it up, because you want to line it up with the edge here, just like this. But then once you do that, so where I'm going to go ahead, this is how I'm going to do it. You can do it in the directions. It says to just line it up, which means your whole fabric would be out here and you're getting your crease along that open edge. So I found it easier, or I'm thinking it will be easier to have it inside of that hole and then turn your, if you do it this way, make sure to turn your hoop over and open that up because we don't want to stitch on this yet. So I'm just thinking it'll be easier to line it up with that crease if we have our fabric in the hole. So I've put it in the hole and I have um, taped the excess fabric off because we don't want it over here just yet. Later we will, but not yet. So that way this is lined up with that crease. All right, and then we are going to stitch this in place. So this is what it'll look like before we stitch the tack down lines. We've got, I have mine in the hole. You can just have your whole piece here with this lined up with that center cut line. Either way works. I am using um, blue thread. It just, it doesn't matter what color thread at this point. And our next color is going to be that one on the advent. So I'm just using blue at this point. Just a reminder, before you stitch that advent one and then the 20, make sure that your fabric is not behind this fabric. Only your fusible side of your fabric should be on the right side and either the rest laying over on the top here or on the bottom tape down away, not underneath these fabrics. I hope that makes sense. Okay, after you have stitched the advent numbers, then you're going to turn your hoop to the back. And if you didn't already put your fabric through that hole, you're gonna do that now. For me, I already have it through the hole, so I'm just gonna take out the tape here, and I'm gonna fold it over and tape it in place here. That's all. And then we will tack down again so that the fabric in the back is tacked down. It will look like this on the back and like this on the front. Those holes will be clear now.
right, the next step is to put our lid fabric on top at the placement line. So you can see the placement stitch here. And we're going to take the fold of the fabric and line that up with the edge of our fabric. Center this between these two blocks. You can see it's larger. And we're just right, the folded edge right there, the folded edge is along um, the cut the area and then tape it in place and then we will stitch that down All right Okay, now we are going to do the left side. So just like I did before, I'm, you're gonna open it up, put it into that hole, the cut hole. I've already done the first one so that you can see one done and one in process. So make sure that it's all the way over across that crease and then tape in place. And then we're going to turn the hoop over and do the same thing on the back. So you can see I've already done this one. So you're going to tape it in place so that nothing moves while it's stitching. You want to make sure to have this locked down. All right, so the back will look like that. The front will look like this. I'm sure you realize that the reason that we didn't do this on the first one, we waited to put the back down is because we needed to stitch the advent numbers. All right, let's take this to the hoop and keep going. One more thing is we're gonna put tape across the entire opening here just to make sure that the foot doesn't get caught in there when it's doing the tack down lines. Just like we did before, we are going to take our um, lid fabric and the part that has the fold is going to go over at, right at the edge. Line it up right at your the edge of your tack down line. All right, and center your fabric and then tape in place. This is just going on the top. Now trim the box lids, but only the bottom, only the bottom of both of them, both sides, bottom only. Okay, now we are going to place our zipper. So using this center hole, where we cut open that area, we are going to place our zipper right lined up with that hole, all right? And you wanna make sure that the zipper end and the zipper pull, both of these are up at the top, out of the way of the stitching, same with this bottom piece. And then we're going to simply tape it in place. You can see where the stitching will be because this is the top of our box. So we're not going to have a problem. The tape will just help the, the foot to not get caught. All right, just make sure your zipper is straight, tape it in place and make sure that your, 
the zipper pull is out of the way. you to make a note of this I just noticed that it is gonna do the zipper tack down on both of the gifts and yet I didn't put a stop in um, to change the color so I'm gonna hit the stop button but I want to point this out to you when you are creating your file if you want a different color like I'm gonna have stop it and put in red here um, so I'm just gonna watch it and after it tacks down that zipper I'm gonna change hit stop on my machine and change the color because I didn't realize that when I was merging my threads together or merging my steps together Okay, are you ready to line up our gift box with the outline here? So very similar to how we did the mitten, uh, we are going to put a pin, hopefully you can see this, right through the end of the satin stitching. So here's our satin stitching and then there's that tack down line right there. So right through that tack down line at the end of the satin stitching. Put your pin. Okay. 
And then same thing for the other side. At the end of the satin stitching, sorry, at the end of the satin stitching, that tack down stitch there, that is where we are going to place our pin. All right, and check on the back to make sure, sorry, check on the back to make sure that it is through that tack down stitching. I'm actually going to grab my glasses. Okay. So adjust if needed. This one, if you can see it, it's a little bit high, just a bit. So I'm going to redo this one. Excuse my dog. So at the end of the satin stitching, right through the stitching. And then I'm going to look at the back. There we go. Sorry, it's hard to hold this and do it and video it. So can you see that? All right, right through the stitching on the back and on the front. And then this one, it's a little not quite right at the end there. So I'm going to go ahead and redo this one too. See if I've got it closer. No, not really. Sorry, I'm hitting the. There we go. Okay. Sorry about that. I know it's hard to see when I'm trying to get it in, but all right. So, right through, see that stitching at the end there? And then when you turn it over, you should be able to see it right through the stitching there. All right. And then once we have that, then we're going to line it up. Let's see if you can see, hopefully, right at that corner there where the lid is going to begin. All right, and we're going to put those pins right in that bit. I bought these cork boards. I'm gonna try this out. I bought it on Amazon to see if that holds my pin in place. All right, so I, um, can you see this? Nope, sorry. Okay, so I am going to put my pin right through that corner right there. Okay, good, you can see. I wanted to make sure. All right, and then I have placed it through my cork. And then on this other one, same thing. I'm going to look for the corner. Make sure that it is right in that corner spot. It's perfect. Okay, so that is good. And then once we have it where we want it, then we're going to tape in place. Okay, we have our box tacked down. Very, very, very important. Now is time to open our zipper and I can't do it one handed. <laughs> Hold on. Okay, open your zipper three quarters of the way down from the get the top and then tape over it and tape the top together. All right, the top and over the little pull thing. All right, 